Meaningful Medicine is a Novant Health podcast, bringing you access to leading doctors who answer questions they wish you would ask. From routine care to rare conditions, our physicians offer tips to navigate medical decisions and build a healthier future. I'm your host, Maggie McKay. It's so good to have you here. Welcome, Dr. McKinney. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. So today we are going to talk about strokes. And before we get started, I'd love to know how neurology became a passion of yours and what made you become a brain specialist. So um, I went to medical school thinking I wanted to be a pediatrician and, and take care of kids. And then my first uh, first semester of medical school, we had a neuroscience class and I didn't have any neurosciences in my undergraduate uh, 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 courses. And uh, it was just really intuitive and fascinating to me. Um, the guy that was our neuroscience professor was Scottish and spoke with this really nice brogue. And a lot of a lot of my co students fell asleep during his classes, but I was enthralled. And so, from from there on, I wanted to be a neurologist. And did he know that you took that path? Did you ever let him know? No, no. Um, once uh, we kind of moved on to the clinical rotations, we lost touch. But. Mm -hmm. And then what made you go on to becoming a brain specialist? So um, the two kind of choices are really when I, when I got down to it towards the end of medical school, I was thinking of the neurology, which takes uh, it's kind of the medical uh, part of neurosciences and taking care of people with brain and spinal cord and nerve disorders or cardiology, which is a, a heart doctor. And I really liked cardiovascular physiology. So I kind of um, merge the two. And so I'm a vascular neurologist by training and take care of people that have had strokes and have vascular diseases of the, of the brain. So let's start with the basics. What is a stroke? So there's, there's two big types of strokes. Uh, the more common type of stroke, which is about 80% of people have a blocked blood vessel from plaque buildup or a clot that limits blood flow and oxygen delivery to the brain. Um, and brain needs oxygen and needs, it needs glucose and sugar to, to survive. And so, um, without that, those brain cells die pretty quickly. And then about 20% 20, uh, 20 of people that have strokes actually have bleeding into the brain from a ruptured blood vessel or ruptured aneurysm. And the Southeast United States is sometimes referred to as the stroke belt. Why is that? If you look at, um, just incidents and, um, of, and mortality of strokes, the southeast part of the United States has the highest incidence and, and, and penetration of stroke. There's a lot more people that smoke in the southeast part of the United States. And so that's a big modifiable risk factor. And then um, African American and, and black people have higher incidences of stroke and stroke at a younger age. And so there's um, we have a lot more African Americans in the southeast US than maybe in some other populations. And so some of those things uh, um, contribute to having a higher higher disease uh, burden in, in our part of the country. And how can somebody identify a stroke? So there's, um, we teach people B fast um, and it's an acronym. So B stands for balance. So all of this, any sudden onset of neurological symptoms. So balance difficulty, E stands for eyes. So sudden onset of vision loss in one or both eyes. F stands for face. So a facial droop, um, ask people to smile and if it's asymmetric. Um, a stands for arms. So you have them hold their arms out. And if one side, uh, is weak or drifts or they can't lift it at all. Um, um, and S is for speech. So inability to speak or slurred speech. And then T is time. So we want people to call 911, um, uh, if, if they suspect that they have any stroke symptoms. And why is it so important to not second guess yourself, but instead seek help immediately? All of our treatment options are based uh, on how fast you seek medical attention. So the longer you delay, the more uh, brain cells can die. And the more brain cells die, the more disability um, that you may have. So the quicker you get medical attention, the more likely you are to save um, vital tissue in your brain. So better safe than sorry, right? If you're wrong, whatever. Yeah. But if you're right, it could save your life. Yeah, absolutely. Our our EMS systems uh, do a good job of uh, screening people for strokes and they notify the hospitals that they're inbound to stroke patients. So the stroke teams, emergency medicine physicians, and um, can rapidly assess people and, and determine whether they're having a stroke or not. The Novant Health New Hanover Regional Medical Center is a comprehensive stroke center. What are the advanced treatments that you offer patients there? So comprehensive stroke centers are able to take care of 
all varieties of stroke from the mildest to the most severe forms of stroke. Um, particularly, we offer catheter-based therapies for ischemic strokes from blocked blood vessels. We have neurosurgeons that can go into the brain with a catheter. Um, they access it through the blood vessels in the wrist or in the groin, snake that catheter up to the blockage in the brain and pull out that clot. Um, we're also able to treat aneurysms, either similar with a catheter-based therapy where they go in and put coils or stents to prevent the aneurysm from filling. Um, and we offer uh, standard neurosurgical treatments for craniotomies where they cut people's heads open and, and operate on the brain. It sounds like you've got all the bases covered. Um, so what does stroke recovery look like for many people? So hopefully, um, if, if everything goes well, um, patients have really minimal disability and they're able to go home from the hospital. That's not always the case. Um, oftentimes people need um, more specialized rehab services following it. So we try to get patients uh, from the hospital to an acute rehab hospital. Um, we're lucky enough to have one attached uh, to no one uh, near Hanover Regional Medical Center. Um, there we have physiatrists that specialize in stroke rehab and recovery and physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech therapists that all help patients on their road to recovery. Let's talk about prevention, Dr. McKinney. How can we prevent stroke in the first place? So the biggest risk factor that's modifiable that we want to treat is blood pressure. Um, high blood pressure is the biggest risk factor for ischemic stroke from the blocked blood vessels and for hemorrhage and bleeding into the brain. Normal blood pressure is really less than 130 over 80. And so it's important for people to monitor their blood pressure at home, know what it is, and if it's elevated, um, seek uh, advice from their medical uh, providers. Is there anything else you'd like to add in closing? Uh, no, if, uh, remember, be fast, people. Um, B is balance, E is eyes, F is face, A is arms, S is speech, and T is time. Call 911, uh, get to the hospital, get evaluated if you have any of those sudden onset of stroke symptoms. Um, it could save your life. That's a good thing to know. Thank you so much, Dr. McKinney, for this invaluable information and sharing your expertise. We appreciate you. Great. Thank you for having me. To find a physician, visit NovantHealth.org. For more health and wellness information from our experts, visit HealthyHeadlines.org. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it on your social channels and check out our entire podcast library for topics of interest to you. I'm Maggie McKay. Thank you for listening to Meaningful Medicine, a podcast from Novant Health.